Anyone who has become sensitive enough to experience the flow of life within yourself, you will know that the flow of life, the flow of life force within you can go upward or downward. When it goes downward, your tendencies are more related to the lower chakras. When it's upward, your tendencies and what you tend to do in your life, what you associate yourself with, your experiences that you're having tend to be more upward. Now, what happens when that life force becomes more pronounced upwardly? When it becomes more pronounced upwardly, you have compassion, love, what you call the uncorrupted human being. When you start to experience your state as the uncorrupted human being, as the human being without the conditioned existence so that you take away the conditioning, you take away the patterns, you take away the mind, then you are in a completely different realm, which is your original realm. That is the part of you that has always been there and that has been the part of you that has always wanted to be recognized, to be acknowledged. That's the part that was the reason why we may have externalized joy, externalized happiness, filled a void or maybe not had the time to realize that there is a void and that void is that this, this part of us, which is the original self, wants to be known, wants to be experienced. Because now when we're in the higher chakras, this is when you're in the seat of compassion, you're in the seat of love. And if you've now experienced the life force uncoiling itself, for Kundalini to now become more pronounced in what we call an awakening, it will happen so that if that kundalini has awakened at a time when you weren't ripe or you weren't ready that there was still a conditioned existence remaining inside of you where you're still karmically enmeshed and tangled you're still off the body you still Think about yourself as being what it is that is being perceived in this mirror that you see in the others. So your perception of yourself is what you think is perceived by others. Does that make sense? So it is that you're not even perceiving what is just as it is. But when you're still basing your perception on the feedback that you receive from outside of you, and that feedback is what you think is the feedback, not even what the actual feedback of itself might be. When we have transcended, when you've come out of that, then we are in your higher chakras or upper chakras. There is a lot of information on Kundalini. This is a topic I never really wanted to delve into as deep as I have most recently. And the reason being that there is already so much information out there that it is quite overwhelming for one who is on the path to decide what information is the right information? What information is the information that's going to take me to where I need to be? And how do I know that wherever the information is coming from, that it is coming from experience as opposed to what we have read? Folks, it is such a deep topic, but we will try. Now, if you're a scholar or well-read or a nyani, 
Anyaranya ni well read in concepts but you're a vedic nyani vedic that you're following the vedas and you're coming from that direction your view on kundalini will be based on that if you are a scholar without direct experience although you might attribute some mental shifts paradigm shifts of just your mindset causing sensations in your body as a kundalini awakening when in fact it may well not be because it is not as easy as it appears to be suddenly to awaken kundalini now if you are then a tantric teacher so you understand the concept of tantra and that side is available in every teaching you're going to have one that is quite you know openly taught as what we now see religions the big religions they will openly teach the scriptures and you read the various scriptures and all of that then on the other side there will be the hidden teachings too so these vedic and tantric sides go together so they're always there but the tantric side is almost always hidden now the reason why it's hidden it is something that was passed down although there have been a, there's a lot of literature on this it is not as available as we think it is because what is available vedically or what is has been open so far is what has been presented as being the entire truth or how it is but it's only when you say sign up with a guru or you know somebody with direct experience for example then you are taught a different thing you are taught the techniques of what this side which has been so openly spoken about now this is where kashmiri shaivism there is so many maha nirvana tantra there are so many ways so many okay i remember when i was in kamakya devi temple and i did i spent a fair amount of time there as well and there were different experiences and uh, i met a lady who was involved in the occult and i knew that she was but she was very keen on inviting me to her home and where she was going to be performing certain practices and she said to me please please you know you must come and i knew at that time that right okay perhaps you know maybe this is this is what what it is maybe i don't really want to participate yet again i felt that since it didn't matter to me either way as i'm uninvolved i will go and see what it is that she merely wanted my presence there to be involved in her personal worship of what she was doing now what she was doing is completely different to what you would hear or what you read about or what is openly taught because we don't talk about those things and for somebody who's a vedic scholar or a, even a vedic guru to see these things would say oh no 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 we poo poo on these things these are not things that are normal or they are you know they belong to the occult they belong to the dark side and so we don't do that at a similar at a similar sort of tantric place which was the temple of baglamukhi in himachal pradesh i remember arriving there and uh, 
I was called by one of the people present there who started saying all sorts of things and asked, you know, and I knew that, okay, they want me to go there. So I went there and there was a story. And the story was that this person used to be a well-educated professor and uh, for whatever reason, the person lost, lost it. And uh, what they said there was that they became possessed by a spirit and they asked for some form of intervention, which was all very interesting. Now, the reason why I'm sharing all of this with you is that our view or what we have so far been taught, so far even experienced, is never a complete view or a complete experience of anything. That includes whatever it is that you feel right now you're experiencing or what you call is a Kundalini awakening that you're experiencing. Folks, it is not as simple as that. Whatever it is, there is always more. Wherever teachings are imparted, there will be a hue and a shade. There will be a tinge of the other person's mindset or the other person's own blueprint, their own experiences, their own baggage that they are carrying. Unless, like I said before, you get to a point where you are impressionless, and preferably, you'd then meet one that is such and therefore, through that, you can experience all that is. Without applying any techniques, without going through all of that. Now, previously, there was a system where you apply techniques where you go through meditation, you go through various disciplines in order for you to reach a certain point to heal yourself. And it was part of discipline. It was part of introverting the senses. And meditation, as we know, is not that you sit. It's not that you chant. It's not that you focus on something. No, it is actually a state of allowing whatever it is. It's not even stillness. It is just what it is. It is simply when you are in a state of letting it happen. Allow. Allow. And you can sit. You can sit on your sofa. You can sit on the floor. Sit cross-legged. Sit whichever way you want. And you just... Allow. You can stare at an object, you can look out, and you see. See your thoughts, see yourself. Become the witness of yourself. You're witnessing yourself from there. You are witnessing. Right? So that is another way. With all of this information that is all available and every other person feels that, oh, I'm experiencing my Kundalini, oh, I'm experiencing my Kundalini. And most of the stories are that I'm experiencing a Kundalini awakening, but that you are going through so many imbalances. This is when the Kundalini has awakened in a system that was not ready or a system that was not clear where the passage the sushumna was not clear because of the baggage at every meridian we know that we are full of energy centers we're full of different circuits in our system and so it's not just the seven but we focus on those seven at each point, there will be an accumulation of some sort of samskaras, vrittis, 
the baggage that you're holding. Now, without your channel being clear, Kundalini will not have enough force to go. So instead, she will be focused on that where there is no clarity. So in, it will be that point of blockage. She'll be focused on that point of blockage. So when you're having trouble, you ask yourself, where am I blocked right now? Where am I blocked right now? And you allow, you allow that block to melt away. It's not that you've got to go to a healer or you've got to go and do a yoga pose or breath work. Yes, these are all tools. They may work, they may not work. Right? It may have worked for you. It may not have worked for you. But that is not to say that these tools are invalid. Because tools are tools. They are there. But they have got to be suited to our disposition and composition and institution and constitution. They cannot work if it has not been tailored to our samskaras, our vrittis, our blueprint. So, to give you a simple example, if you are a Christian and now you decided, okay, I don't want to be on that path, religion doesn't serve me, you decided to go on some tour and you decided that you now want to worship Goddess Kali, for example, yeah, or maybe you want to, you, you've fallen in love with Lord Shiva and you've decided that this is the way for me, right? So, in fact, it is not that you've decided that this is the way for you, but that the tailored solution for you with the dominant blueprint that you carry is that which doesn't come from your current reality, but because you're still rooted in another parallel reality or another life where perhaps you were that attached to those aspects and facets we call Shiva or Kali. So that is a form of that it has been a tailored solution and for which you yourself have taken that step. Or maybe some there was some sort of an intervention which happened and you went with that. So either way, with the Kundalini awakening, Ask yourself, is the flow going down? Is the flow going up? Is the flow stuck somewhere? Where am I in my life right now? But it's not as simple as even saying, oh, you know, I've put on weight. Or, oh, you know, I can't sleep. Or, oh, you know, this chakra of mine is exaggerated. Or, you know, I feel envy. I feel greed. I feel resentment. All of those things. Or you may feel like maybe you play mind games. You know, maybe you're not over those sort of childish things that you do. There have been so many things. And you think, oh, okay, so perhaps this has got to do with this. Da -da 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 -da. You can, and then you can retrace it, and then we can find a solution. But when I say it's not as simple as that, the art of allowing is also to remain stuck. What appears to be stuck is in fact not stuck. It is still movement, but it appears to be stuck because we are bent upon how we want things to be or that we have been provided with an idealized way of life, maybe to buy into something. There is no ideal. Yes, the uncorrupted human. But to get there, which was our original self, you've got to get through that. You've got to get through all of the rest. Not through forcing yourself that, oh, I must do this. I must do this. Yes, there is a form of discipline that comes. For some of us, that discipline may not work 
it may not work for some of us discipline doesn't work because discipline won't work if there is still things that are suppressed to discipline works when we allow whatever wants to show its head whatever wants to come out you are allowing it to come out but where the discipline is being used to suppress rather than process then it's not going to work then what we have is a mental exercise what we'll have is a very frustrated person not a yogi it is it can take lifetimes to go through the entire kundalini circuit to go through the entire and the reason why there are when you know most people going through kundalini awakening at the moment say oh we're going through this the dark side of spiritual awakening or this is the dark side nobody told us about this nobody told us about this it's all there it's always been out there it's always been there that we've always known if a kundalini awakening happens in a premature or not a prepared nervous system then of course it's going to cause havoc because you're dealing with such a high voltage of power now when you're dealing with such a high voltage of power that wants to rise but there is so much standing in her way so she's going to clear the path and to clear the path nobody likes housework nobody wants to be cleaning and washing the dishes and making sure that there's no cobwebs there's no dust there's nothing it's pristine crystal clear crystal clear the passage is hollow it's empty then it passes through easily and in fact when kundalini awakens she shoots up and she shoots up touches the bindu and once she's done that you reach as another level another state of nothingness where there's no thought there's nothing so some of you might have experienced these phases very very momentarily or for a long time but when you get your feet back on the ground you'll find yourself back in the doldrums you'll find yourself dealing with other things again so tread with a lot of humility tread with a lot of love and compassion on this path and like i've said all of the time you've not reached until you've reached kundalini awakening is not a mental exercise it will create havoc where that level of purity or rather that corruption the corruption of the human being has not been dissolved and there are so many ways that we spoke about in a previous post about how to awaken kundalini so folks wherever you are take it all with a pinch of salt if you're unwell make sure you go to wherever you are inclined I have never encouraged allopathic medication. I myself steer clear of this. But it is what you feel comfortable in. You must remember that I'm not a medical professional, but you need to seek advice when that is needed from whoever it is that you would trust. our body is an incredible incredible factory it can produce anything we don't need to go outside of us to look for something our body has it all but 
because we have put everything in different places in our body or we are not aware or we're not listening to the body's intelligence the body is going haywire wherever you are in your awakening know that that's where you're meant to be allow for the awakening to take place know that you are supported know that this gift is yours and carry out all that beautiful inner guidance through as long as that inner guidance is expansive not contracting and as long as it's full of love and driven through love and by love lots of love take care and thank you for staying tuned in to yourself